still a very point. Um, uh, I think some of the people with me, with some of the some of the early heroes for me, guys like Sid Jackson, um, Tom Porter, and uh, Hita Te Himara, uh, people like that were leaders for, for us younger ones back in the, those days. Um, and this was way before the tour as well, back to the early 70s. Um, that all. <laughs> and uh, we sort of followed that then through uh, Bastion Point um, into, into the tour. Um, Ketawa, a uh, little bit of strife at Auckland University, all that kind of stuff, but uh, it led to a, a growing awareness. Mana Motuhake, uh, Mana Māori. There was, there was a general sense amongst a lot of Māori that uh, we needed something different, but we were still very much locked to the whole labour thing, as a, as a historical labour link, and it was very hard to break. And um, then, of course, the Four Shorts Act of 2004 gave us the opportunity to, to, to snap those links. Um, and from that was for the Māori Party. And then, of course, uh, I got into a bit of strife with uh, the Māori Party because of my differences um, with our relationship with National and our, our continuing links with the rich. When in fact, I knew that most Māori didn't fit that well. Um, and of course, Labour had abandoned not just the working class, but the Māori voters as well. So uh, at, I did an article in the Sunday Star Times in January of this year, which was critical of the Māori Party's relationship with National and, uh, and abandoning its own people at that, that level. And I found that as I travel around the country after I got in trouble and I got invited to go and speak here and everywhere, I was getting a whole lot of parking people going up and shaking my hand, which was different. <laughs> <laughs> um, but after a while I started to realise that when I was talking about um, the things that were affecting Māori people generally and in my critique of the Māori party, in fact, Pākehā people could see that I was criticising the sorts of things that were affecting them too. And, uh, you know, didn't take... I always knew that that whole sort of uh, relationship between uh, between Māori nationalism and, and socialism. I, I've always sort of followed a lot of that kind of stuff, but it just became more and more obvious very, very quickly that uh, there was a heck of a lot more non-Māori in this country who are very, very poor. And yet the Māori Party tended to stick too close to uh, even the black corporates, I have to say. A lot of the, the iwi corporates who are doing exceedingly well at, um, at, uh, to the detriment often of their own workers. Um, and it just became necessary to send a signal that mana, if there was going to be a separation, if there were going to be two Māori parties in Parliament, Māori named parties, one of them was going to be hanging out with Don Brash and National, and the other one wasn't. And so clearly, there was already one that was hanging out with Don Brash and National, so Mana was going to be the wasp. So that's really where Mana come from. And um, it's just become more comfortable as I go around talking to people, all sorts of people, uh, for me to, to just send a message to people, don't look to mana as being another Māori party, look to mana. If you want to see change in our world, look to where you fit into that world and use mana as a vehicle to be part of that change. So I was just having a meeting with some guys, um, some people last night, and um, I, I told them about how one of my nephews is um, who's gay, um, Takatapu, they, they call themselves, uh, he rang me up one night, he said, well, what's Mana going to do for Takatapu? I said, well, probably nothing. I said, the thing is, what does, what does Takatapu want to do for themselves? Hey, does, do you see a role within Mana for Takatapu? Um, I said, 
you guys need to not look as, at Manila like it's a political party, because we're not. We're a movement for change. And if you want change, then Manas, Manas the vehicle. But if you're looking for a political party that you can ask questions of and, and vote for or not vote for, then I don't really care. I'm not, I'm not in it for the votes really, I'm in it for the change. When I get to November, votes will help a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but the change is more important than the votes are. And I just wanted to say that signal out. I was at another meeting in, in Waikato a few nights ago, and most of the people there were Māori, and there was a couple of Māori people. One young woman in particular, you could see she was really wanting to feel engaged, but didn't feel engaged. So I went and sat and had a chat to her afterwards, and she's, she's part of a socialist workers' movement in, in Hamilton. And they go out to Franklin, and they're passing out these mana, mana things. And she wants to be part, but she didn't see help. I said, you know, you should get that mana t and just put socialist underneath, <coughs> underneath it, mana socialist, and then see how, how that, that sorts of things you're talking about can fit mana. Well, don't, don't wait for me to give you directions. Just seize, seize control, seize the time. Be part of the movement for change and don't, don't wait for the people at the top to say, we are going to be like this. Mm. If you think the change is, is where you want to be and you get a sense that that where's money's, where's, where's money going, then yeah, get on board, eh? So that's money, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> start out with a blueprint and say this is how it's going to be. But what you do is you, with, with a movement, you start out and say, well these are our, we can see, um, you know, we can make some words about a long-term goal, but it's, this, but it's the, the immediate things you work towards, okay? And it's those things like the change, dramatic change in the taxation system of the country, which I think would be the most transformative thing we, we could do. Because I, I have great confidence in, in families and communities to look after themselves. Okay. Uh, we have child abuse is rife in New Zealand. It's appalling. And the reason is we have this, this dramatic inequality in the country. Uh, I know I'm going to go on a bit here, but um, in, inequality, if, if, there's a, if there's one book you should read, it's called The Spirit Level. Okay? The Spirit Level by um, two academics in Britain. And what they did, they, they looked at these social problems in developed countries like New Zealand. And they said, what drives social problems? So they drew all these graphs, okay? And to cut a long story short, they found it was nothing to do with the wealth of a country. You've got an incredibly wealthy country like America, which has the worst social problems in the world. What they did finally was they plotted graphs that involved income inequality. How much more does the top 20% own compared to the bottom 20%? And then they rated all these 31 countries, and then they drew graphs, and they used statistics from the world.